Tony is drying off as I write this. We have all decided to continue our journey to the beginning of time. To recall that geologic time chart at the museum, scientists say that life has existed on Earth for some 500 million years. I estimate that so far we've traveled back only about one or two million. If I'm right, we've just passed through an era known as the Pleistocene period and stand now on the threshold of... The Pleistocene. Even a relatively recent time period can be filled with animals unlike anything that we have today. Now, as a kid, I was never really captivated by the Pleistocene. This time period closely resembles what we have today, unlike the Mesozoic. And I was drawn more to dinosaurs and the more ancient time periods. The Pleistocene was an epoch which lasted from 2.58 to 11,700 years ago. But recently, I have started to look at those more recent time periods. And I've really come to appreciate some of the animals that lived in that time period. So today, we are going to be looking at five of the most lethal and terrifying predators that existed throughout the Pleistocene. We will be looking at these animals that existed in this not-so-bygone age in time to start off spooky season. The Pleistocene is an age that, while not very long ago, does still feel very prehistoric. As much as any dinosaur does. So, without further ado, these are the Predators of the Pleistocene. Starting off this video with one of the most uncanny horrors early humans likely had deadly encounters with, the gigantic baboon Dinopithecus, the terrible ape. I mean, if you think about baboons today and how bad they can be, this one's tall enough to look you right in the eye and they were likely just as aggressive as the ones we have today. Still think you're gonna be able to sleep tonight? Well, yeah, Spino, you could, but not me. And what about those early humans who only had stone hand axes to deal with these things? Spino, just stop. You're ruining the spookiness of this animal. Imagine the scene. You're one of the many human species that lived in the Pleistocene. The only thing that you have are your primitive stone tools, maybe spears if you're one of the more advanced species. You wake one night, only to see this uncanny sight of a baboon larger than you munching on one of your fellows from your tribe. It had to be one of the most frightening things early human species could have ever seen. These horrors would have truly lived up to the name Terrible Ape, and based on evidence from the teeth that we have, compared to modern baboons that resemble these, this baboon was likely at least twice the size of any baboon living today. Males perhaps weighed up to 101 pounds and females weighed somewhere around 64. Remember, all size estimates come from molar teeth fossils we have and then they're compared to modern baboons. Despite the few fossils, we know this animal was much larger compared to any other baboon, as I mentioned. Studying the enamel on its teeth, we have determined that Dinopithecus likely ate a wide range of plants that could be easily digested, along with fruits, grass, and other various savanna-based foods that other primates would eat, such as insects, and yes, meat from smaller animals. Young individuals of early human species were likely on the menu, and due to how aggressive baboons today can be, I could absolutely see these larger ones not only attacking, but eating full-grown members of ancient human species. And likewise, there is some evidence that early humans hunted these giant apes too. No bones beyond the skull of this animal have ever been found, so most of how this animal lived, hunted, and moved is lost to time, at least until a more complete specimen is found. 
But due to its size, we believe that they likely spent most of their time walking on all fours, something that modern baboons do as well. Climate change likely caused Dinopithecus to go extinct sometime between 2.58 million years ago and 11,700 years ago. So, any time in the entirety of the Pleistocene, take your pick. Due to its large size, it couldn't handle the changing climate and disappeared from the planet. And until more fossils are found that give us a more complete look at the animal, what this terrifying baboon was like in life will remain a frightening mystery lost to the prehistoric past. But perhaps there is a very good reason that we still fear the smaller ones today beyond their aggressive nature. Some memory ingrained in us that we have never fully been able to do away with. What might have caused such a memory, though, is a frightening mystery. Uh-oh, look, there's a lioness, and she's got a fang spirit for hunting. Mmm, that's no lioness. That's the meanest killer of the tertiary period, a saber-toothed tiger. Vultures seem to... Something we have significantly more fossils of, and something that is very well known, even if it is often called the incorrect name, saber toothed tiger, is the Smilodon. Smilodon is not a tiger, but it did have saber teeth. The Smilodon genus has three known species, with Smilodon populator being the largest one, and Smilodon gracilis being the smallest. These predators likely hunted large herbivores like bison. And yes, they lived up to the name saber-toothed cats. These large cats roamed the Pleistocene from 2.5 million years ago to just around 10,000 years ago, a long-lived terror of the not-so-long-gone ancient prehistoric world. It vanished, but was rediscovered again in 1842 when the first fossils of it were found in Brazil, and this discovery would introduce the world to one of the most famous prehistoric animals outside of the dinosaurs. The art you see on screen now was even drawn by Charles Knight, who drew some of the most famous early paleo art of dinosaurs. One of which, the Allosaurus scavenging a dead animal, is one of my all-time favorites. Yeah, before I bite off more than I can chew. Just to play it safe, new image. The type species was Smilodon populator, and there have been two other species described since this original one. Not much of its physical appearance is known, aside from those saber teeth and some other fossils, obviously. But the, the fur coat pattern is unknown. Films tend to sometimes give the animal stripes, like ones on its unofficial namesake, the tiger. The animal has been reconstructed with plain coats of fur and spotted ones, and both are seen as being possible. If males of the genus had any kind of mane is also unknown, any traces would be hard to find in fossils. Beyond the fur patterns being unknown, we know that Populator, the largest species, weighed possibly 900 pounds. The animal ate other large megafauna, something that possibly contributed to its ultimate extinction along with competition and climate change, and it likely killed its prey by holding it still with its forelimbs and biting with those giant saber teeth. Animals that it ate included camels, bison, members of the horse genus, and other large herbivores like Toxodon. And Smilodon lived in regions with large, expansive forests and brush, which it would have used to ambush prey. The name Smilodon itself is... scary. It means tooth-shaped like a double-edged knife. And it gets even better. The name Populator means he who brings destruction. Or even more fun, the destroyer. Nope, that's a big nope. I don't want to be hunted by the one who brings destruction. Who is this freaking Morgoth and Sauron? All Smilodon species have one major thing that separates them from other big cats today. And that is the thing that makes them famous. The saber teeth. 
The Destroyer and other Smilodon species were around the size of modern big cats, but more robustly built. No need, Spino, you made the joke for me. Smilodon had a short tail and broad limbs and a high scapula. Its teeth were 11 inches long, at least in Populator. They were slender and serrated on the front and back, sharp and slanted forwards. The muzzle was short, you can see that in the on-screen image, and it likely had highly complex regions in its brain that could control sense of sight, hearing, and coordination of its limbs due to its brain being very much like those you see in modern big cats, only smaller. The Smilodon is known for being among the animals that have been found in natural predator traps, such as tar pits where animals became trapped and then die, and then carnivores come in and feed on the carcasses and also become trapped and die. The Labria tar pits is a good example of this, and a far more ancient but also good example is the quicksand pit that became the sandstone Utah Raptor Megablock. Animals that fall into these natural traps become buried quickly when they sink, but as many of 90% of the bones excavated from the Berea tar pits themselves are predators. The most recent Smilodon fossils found in the tar pits were around 13,000 years old. Smilodon's range extended from, with different species spread from South America to as far north as Canada. Despite being widespread and a successful genus, the genus still became extinct around 10,000 years ago during the Quaternary Extinction Event when big megafauna were replaced with smaller and more agile animals like deer. If Smilodon was too specialized for hunting large megafauna, then these newer, faster animals would have been something that they just weren't adapted to hunt, but this is up for debate. Climate change and competition with modern humans who entered the Americas around the time Smilodon disappeared have also been proposed as explanations for why these large, terrifying predators disappeared from the Earth. The 10,000-year extinction date is also debated, with the last truly agreed-upon date being just over a 1,000 years before that. Either way, when the Pleistocene ended, so too did this predator's terrifying reign of terror. From saber teeth into the jaws with a toxic bite. It just keeps getting better. Oh, it's also a giant Komodo dragon lookalike that was as long as your car. It really only does get better the more we go along. Out of all of these, this one perhaps looks the most like what one would most likely think of first when they hear the words prehistoric animal. In this case, out of the ones we're covering, it l looks the most like all the hallmarks of the ancient past. This is not a giant mammalian predator, but instead a giant lizard. The Megalania the largest lizard to have ever existed. This real-life dragon stalked Australia during the Pleistocene. It was a giant lizard, the largest terrestrial lizard to have ever existed that we know of. Being up to 23 feet long, like the Utah Raptor from the last video, and likely weighed somewhere between 214 and 4,277 pounds. That's a big difference. Due to the fact that we only have fragmentary remains of this giant lizard, we kind of have to throw a wide net to cover all the ground that we guess. The first remains of Megalania were found in 1859. It consisted of three vertebrae, and its name means Giant Ancient Roamer. Megalania, despite still going by that name pretty much any time anyone talks about it, is actually not a valid genus anymore. Instead, it is now referred to as Varanus, which would make it a very close relative to the monitor lizards found in Australia today, which would make sense. 
This carnivore would have been a terror as it stalked through prehistoric Australia. In fact, prehistoric Australia itself was an isolated land of horrors. Check out my video on prehistoric crocodiles for more nightmare fuel. As I said, even though it's not a scientific name, it is a synonym of it and regarded as the standard name for this animal. And it is still almost always called the original name it was given, Megalania. So I am going to be referring to it as Megalania. As I said, this giant lizard possibly reached sizes of 23 feet long. And if Utah Raptor did too, then that would be a wild prehistoric fight club matchup but it's possible that its length was somewhat closer to 15 feet instead. Still a giant lizard that wants to eat you though. That's not changed. In fact, shortening it makes it somewhat scarier because it might be able to get you in smaller places. Possibly, as I said, big estimates on the weight, anywhere between 1370 and 348 have also been thrown around. <laughs> God, when we have so few fossils of it, it's really hard to tell when it comes to the finer details if that wasn't obvious. But it's still the largest terrestrial lizard to have ever existed. And if it was just as lethal and dangerous as something as the Komodo dragon, then it's nightmarish to imagine it hunting you, Komodo dragons. Let's just say they're vicious. Now, speaking of food, what did Megalania eat? And what did it have to eat its prey with? A mouthful of razor sharp serrated teeth, that's what. Its limbs were heavily built and likely allowed it great power when it came to chasing and catching prey. And it likely was able to match the speed of a freshwater crocodile. Those things can run if you didn't know and it's terrifying. This apex predator also likely competed with other apex predators of Australia, such as the large terrestrial crocodiles we covered in the video I mentioned earlier. It likely fed on other megafauna like those terrestrial crocodiles did that were roaming around Australia in the Pleistocene. Its bite was also venomous, so the fun just keeps coming with this one. Like Komodo dragons, it likely had a toxic secreting gland in its mouth, and the bite would have been a death sentence. Now, how did this predator go extinct? How could something as deadly as this vanish from the earth and not be left to terrorize us today because its smaller relatives still do and have shown how dangerous they can be. What happened to Megalania? We know that the animal lasted until the late Pleistocene, the fossils being somewhere around 50,000 years old. It is theorized that the animal was inefficient to outrun the early human settlers that colonized Australia. By the way, why is there no movie about these early humans being forced to fight and survive against these giant lizards? I need it. Anyway, because of this and the fact Megalania vanished around the time that human settlers first arrived, along with other megafauna from Australia also vanishing at the same time, it is thought that these and Megalania were hunted by early humans. It is thought that stories of conflicts between those early settlers and the Megalania might have actually inspired the stories of creatures like incoming name that I will butcher, the Wooey. Sure, I'm going to put it on screen because that can't be right. A seven meter long lizard with six legs. If that is true, then in some ways, the Megalania does still live on in the memories it left imprinted on the people in the region. Today, most reconstructions of this animal heavily base it on and depict it as a large Komodo dragon. How closely it would have really resembled this smaller relative today is completely up for debate. But it is likely there was a family resemblance because the Komodo dragon is the closest relative to Megalania. Somebody was here, and he must have been a hunter. Heavy? He must have been really strong. What is it, Doc? Anthers from some kind of deer. Yeah, but what kind of deer? An awful big kind. Boy, this must weigh a hundred pounds at least. One that potentially lasted until just about 8,300 years ago, 
according to some dubious evidence anyway, the dire wolf was a predator to be feared. Think a wolf, but bigger. Coyotes, doles, gray wolves, and dire wolves all evolved from a shared lineage of canines that started in Eurasia, and then they branched out and spread into the Americas. At this time, North America was long geologically isolated from most of the world, save for a tiny little land bridge, as the last supercontinent broke up in the Mesozoic. Direwolf itself came from the same ancestral lineage as those other animals I mentioned, but it is thought to be a different group of them altogether. Fossils of large extinct wolves were found and categorized by scientists as early as the 1850s. These were found in the United States, but at first it wasn't clear that these fossils belonged to one species. The earliest specimen found that was assigned to dire wolf was found in 1854 in the bed of the Ohio River, near a place I know well, Evansville, Indiana. Study of the dire wolf was long, has been long, and has remained consistent and constant for uh, over 150 years now, even up to today. A DNA study of the dire wolf found it to be a highly divergent lineage when compared to other extant wolf-like canines. The family tree of this animal can be traced back to as far as 40 million years ago. So, what can all this study and all these fossils actually tell us about the dire wolf? Well, for one, we have an idea of its prey. In a similar situation to that of the Utah Raptor Megablock from the last video, we have fossils left behind in predator traps. At the Labria Tar Pits, over 200,000 fossils of the dire wolf have been found, along with other carnivores and the prey animals that drew them into the predator trap, including one called Yesterday's Camel, the extinct Pleistocene Bison, the Western Horse, the Grazing Ground Sloth, the American Mastodon, and Deer that were found across North America by this time. From evidence in the tar pits, the early horses were known to be an important prey species, and that the others were less common in the wolf's diet. The morphology of the dire wolf is similar to its living relatives. Like wolves today, this animal was likely a social hunter, but it also had a large bite force, leading some to wonder if they weren't, in fact, solo acts. Terrifying to imagine being hunted by one, let alone a pack of these, but it also leads other paleontologists to theorize that this meant the animal consumed larger prey animals than was typical for its size, resulting in them having a stronger bite force. Direwolf fossils have been found in rapid fire time, Arizona, California, Florida, Idaho, Indiana, Kansas, Kentucky, Missouri, Nebraska, New Mexico, Oregon, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, South Dakota, Texas, Utah, Virginia, West Virginia, Wyoming, and anyone able to guess the last one? Don't be shy. It's Nevada. There have been Confirmed cases of fossils found in, along with all of those other places, the northern area of California, in Oregon, at the appropriately named Fossil Lake, and in some regions of Texas, Missouri, Florida. For some reason I put Missouri twice in my script. Laugh at me. While not surprising, it does help us learn the exact range of the dire wolf. So this was a capable predator with a vicious bite. Again, I imagine it would have been frightening to be hunted by, put it lightly, and it was very widespread until relatively recent times. So again, what caused this animal to go extinct? As I said, dire wolves lasted until just a few thousand years ago, somewhere between 2,700 and 8,200 years ago. During the Quaternary Extinction event, many of the large predators went extinct, likely due to the large megafauna also disappearing, which is what they depended on for food. What caused the extinction itself is a very debated topic. I'm just going to put it that way. There's some controversial theories. It is likely that as the megafauna disappeared, the dire wolves, which ate them, also disappeared. The populations 
of the carnivore then shrank as the megafauna populations did. And the last ones began dying out. This is a theory, by the way. It's that the last populations that shrank together died out because of diseases brought on by inbreeding as populations shrank to smaller and smaller levels. A not so noble end for what would have probably been a very beautiful animal. Have. This must be the club he used to kill them at. You mean to say he'd go out hunting just with that? I sure hope he's not around. Another American predator from the Pleistocene, and also one that had to have been terrifying to have been hunted by. I mean, look at this thing. This is one that was a terror for a while. Move out of the way, Michael Myers. I want a horror movie about one of these guys for this time of year, because you could make a movie about humans being hunted by one of these easily. When I said it was around for a while, and I mean it, from... 340,000 years ago to just 11,000 years ago before going extinct. Fossils of this lion have shown how widespread it was. They have been found from Alaska to Mexico, and the American lion was originally described by American paleontologist Joseph Loudly, Lidley? Leadley, Lidley. I don't know how to say this guy's last name. In 1853. I apologize, because you're probably spinning in your grave, my guy. From only a fragmentary jawbone. Genetic evidence has shown that the American lion was a sister lineage of the more well-known, I'd say, cave lion, which was another prehistoric predator that could appear in another video like this sometime in the future. In the meantime, back to the American lion, discovered by an individual whose name I butchered. This lion was about 25% larger than modern lions, and its name means savage or cruel. Again, terrifying. Come on, Jurassic Park, give us some Cenozoic animals for the characters to run from. You already opened it up to the Paleozoic. Alright, thank you, Spino. What would I do without you? Well then. The American lion is thought to have grown up to 5 to 8 feet long from nose to tail give or take a few inches, and stood around four feet tall at the shoulder. It was smaller than the Smilodon from earlier in this video, which Smilodon populators thought to have been the largest big cat ever. The American lion, though, is thought to have weighed somewhere around 564 pounds on average for males and 774 pounds for females, so still big. The habitat this animal lived in included savanna and grasslands like modern lions, these also lived in cold conditions and used caves for shelter. It's possible that they used grass and leaves to line their dens, like Siberian tigers do today. Rem remains of these animals are not as frequent as Smilodon or dire wolves, which might suggest that they did not fall into predator traps as often. I know, please. It's not a fair comparison. That was one example for the Utah raptor. What? The American lion is known to have preyed upon the American bison. The mummified carcass nicknamed Blue Babe has clear bite marks and claw marks left behind by lions. But other animals it ate also included rapid fire time again, deers, horses, tapirs, camels, mammoths, and other various hoofed animals. So with such an abundant food source, some of which still exists today, why are there still not American lions stalking around North America today? I work in the forest, too, so that'd make my job harder. What happened to these guys? Well, a lovely little thing known as a mass extinction did. The American lion went extinct somewhere around 11,355 years ago, along with most Pleistocene megafauna during the, you probably guessed it, Quaternary Extinction event. This was a major event, as you can probably guess, that occurred in the late Pleistocene, which saw the disappearance of basically all megafauna on Earth. 
Both climate change and overkill hunting tactics by early humans are thought to have been some of the big contributions to, to this extinction. But which played a bigger role is a very, very, very long and ongoing debate even to this day. It is thought that hunting from humans did contribute to the extinction of the American lion, though. Fossils have been found in camps and other inhabited locations where Paleolithic Americans lived. I wouldn't want to be hunted by any of these, but if you were dropped into a horror movie plot, which would you want your antagonist to be? By itself, I'll take the Dinopithecus. A troop might be a problem, though. I have no desire to reenact the plot of Blood Monkey in real life, but one individual on its own? Maybe. I think the others, the giant lizard with a toxic bite, two large prehistoric cats, and a large dire wolf. Yeah, I'll take the uncanny horror over any of those. Tell me your pick, though, and what you thought of these extinct predators. Tell me which one you thought was the scariest, and tell me if you'd like to see a part two of this with even more of the Pleistocene's terrifying predators given the spotlight. If you do want a part two, it'll probably be sometime after Halloween season is over, though, because I want to make lots of spooky videos this month. Tell me if you're interested in that, though, and stay tuned for the next video. We're going to be talking about a true crime incident from about a decade ago that honestly is. Just the headline alone sounds like the plot of an 80s over-the-top gory slasher movie, so perfect for Halloween. In the meantime, check out my last video. If you enjoyed this one, you will probably like it as well. It's all about the Utah Raptor, and I think it was one of my favorite documentaries that I've ever made. So until the next video, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoy content like this and you want to see more like it, so that I know you do. And be sure to also tell me more prehistoric topics you'd like to see in future videos because anything is on the table. So with all that said, have a good one, everyone.